the Toronto Raptors want to change their look for the upcoming season. And the first signs of these changes will come at preseason. So here are the three biggest things that you should be looking out for as Raptors fans. Let's get into it. NBA preseason is about a month and a half away, but we're still trying to plot out exactly what we're expecting to see from the Raptors this season and where we want to see changes, specifically changes in the development category, because a lot of what the Raptors are going to be doing for the foreseeable future is gambling on internal development. Obviously, the Raptors have looked at the NBA draft, more specifically, the most recent NBA draft where they utilize four picks to bring in four new players to the team. But what they are really going to be betting on, even with these players, is internal development, internal growth. This isn't a team that's going to be a caps based team. This likely isn't going to be a team, unless Masai Ujiri gets some crazy ideas, this likely isn't going to be a team that's shelling out draft picks to really drastically change up the foundation of their roster by bringing in marquee players. They are really going to be focusing on working with what they have, seeing where this core can go, and are happy to do this, especially this season, which is the first year of their rebuild. They're really going to see what they have. They're really going to see what the core can do together. So we really want to take a look at where this internal development is going to come from and if certain signs are going to start showing themselves in that preseason. The players obviously are going to be working all throughout the summer or mostly throughout the summer to try and set their game right and improve on some certain parts of their game to really take it to the next level. And the three biggest ones that I want to be looking out for, I think you should be looking out for in preseason as well, are going to be conveyed over the course of today's video right here on Amateur Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to Toronto Raptors content. Subscribe for more content just like it and drop a like if you enjoy this one along the way. So the first sign of development that we really want to be looking out for in preseason, I think that this is a pretty easy one and it's one we're going to be really looking at for the second straight season or maybe rather the fourth straight season here for Scotty Barnes heading into his fourth NBA season. Yes, the final year of his rookie contract, but have no fear Raptors fans. He has already signed his rookie max extension, meaning the Raptors have control over where Scotty Barnes plays his NBA basketball for six seasons including this one where we want to continue to see progress made in the three-point shooting category now he made a big jump last season it was a jump that we probably were not really expecting either I mean we, we definitely were expecting a jump but jumping all the way up to 34 percent shooting from three was spectacular for the player and really added so many different facets to his game I mean the three-point shot getting a decent three-point shot even just for a player like Barnes, unlocked so many aspects in playmaking and getting to the rim, getting to your spots and doing what you want to do. Everything just becomes that little bit easier by having that three-point shot. But important to note with Barnes is that he was shooting pretty decently above 35% from three near the start of the season. And as his season came to a close, nearer to where he was injured and missed the rest of the season, his three percent started to drop. Especially after the All-Star break, it was dropping. It wasn't as consistent at where it was at the start of the season. So we had a decent sample size where he did shoot 34% from three. Let's see if Barnes can even continue to build off of this. And why not? He just turned 23 years old. He can continue to work on his three-point game and get it even better because if a decent three-point percentage at 34% can unlock all these aspects of his game. Well, how about we can get it to a season-long consistency of 36, maybe even 37% for the player. That is going to take his game to unspeakable levels, potentially. Like, this is already all-star level Scotty Barnes. He made an all-star team this season. And if we can get that even better from a three-point standpoint, as much as there's a lot of things to look for in his game that we want to see continue to grow with the team, I think that the biggest thing to look out for in preseason is, is he taking on these shots? Is he confidently taking them, you know, in rhythm, not hesitating? And is he making them? And if he is making them, it's going to be a scary sight for a lot of NBA teams that are tuning into it. So let's move to the second biggest thing that I think Raptors fans should be looking out for in preseason. And that is looking at Emmanuel quickly. He is a player where you really want to see a certain skill develop because the role that he's playing with the Toronto Raptors is obviously drastically different to the role he was playing with the New York Knicks, where he was coming off the bench more so as a player to score in bunches, really be that three-point threat, really be that scoring threat. And it almost landed him a sixth man of the year award. But that is just not the type of player that Emmanuel quickly is anymore. And I think what was very impressive about his contrast in play from the Raptors compared to when he was at the start of the season with the Knicks 
What's most impressive is how he's really shown an ability to elevate his playmaking. I mean, just strictly from a numbers standpoint here, he went from 2.5 assists per game all the way up to 6.8 assists per game. Like, that's a big jump. And it just happened on the fly. He hit the ground running with these Toronto Raptors as that lead sort of playmaker. Now, this wasn't such a, a shocking change for quickly in terms of himself and his game. He played as a point guard in college. He played as a point guard early on with the New York Knicks and kind of molded into this different role as the team grew. They needed a specific talent out of quickly and they got that, but potentially that's where they saw maybe the long-term fit wasn't there, which is why he ended up on the Raptors in that OG and an OB trade. Well, he really hit the ground running, like I said, with playmaking. And as he's still learning and growing into this position in the NBA at a more consistent basis of playtime, We saw good signs, again, from his first half season with the Raptors. Again, those 6.8 assists per game. But there still was a bit to be desired from a playmaking standpoint, from his entry passes to his kickouts. Just needed to be maybe that little bit cleaner. And it is that little bit cleaner. You know, can we get Emmanuel quickly up to 8 assists per game with the Raptors? That's what I'm going to be looking for this season. And the early signs of the development from a playmaking standpoint with these passes that I mentioned, the pocket passes, etc., All these tools that a point guard has, even as a pick-and-roll player alongside Jakob Pertl, all these tools that a point guard needs to have in the NBA, I'm hoping to see that that development out of Emmanuel quickly start to creep into proceedings in preseason. Now, for the top guys, they're not going to be getting the most amount of minutes as you look to distribute the action and get a good look at everybody. But if these signs are there, it's going to be exciting time for the Raptors again. There are other things to look at for quickly. I think another thing that easily could have been the big thing for him that I wanted to put on this list was his ability to finish on the inside, finish at the rim a bit more consistently. And we saw the numbers here, two point field goal percentage under 45%. We want to see that grow. But if the playmaking is cooking, I think that's going to allow for a bit more space for him to operate at the rim. So that kind of goes hand in hand. The final thing we want to look at is the other part of the core group of players for the Raptors. The real core of this team, absolutely, is Scotty Barnes, Emmanuel Quickly, and R.J. Barrett. So the third thing to look out for is R.J. Barrett in terms of his consistency. Is R.J. Barrett going to continue to produce at this outrageous level? There's been countless videos on YouTube and on this channel talking about R.J. Barrett from his time with the New York Knicks compared to his time with the Raptors. The... the sh- biggest difference like it's it's really surreal to look at these numbers he went from under 47 percent field goal percentage on twos to above 60 percent he went from 33 percent on threes up to 39 percent on threes he went from an effective field goal percentage under 48 percent to above 60 percent in your wildest dreams you could not have imagined rj barrett just simply becoming a completely different player when coming to the toronto raptors and the big thing that shifted for him was just the shot selection like the, the, the quality of the shots that he was taking took a massive step up for the Raptors for whatever reason, whether it's comfortable in the destination playing for the Raptors, more comfortable with the head coach and Dark Ryakovich compared to Tom Thibodeau, having a more assured role and more confidence in his own role with the team, which maybe he didn't have with the New York Knicks, where perhaps he wasn't really a part of the long-term plans, even though they did give him that long-term contract. It seemed like they didn't really want to give it to him, but they gave it so they didn't lose the asset. Ended up using him in a trade for OG and Anobi, which is looking like a pretty decent win-win trade at the moment here. But man, if RJ Barrett continues to play like this, it'll be an even bigger win for the Raptors, and they will be the true winners of this trade. And it comes down to RJ Barrett and this level of efficiency and this quality of shots that he's taking. What was great is that, you know, even like 32 games played is a decent sample size, but... I still wanted to know, you know, can R- I don't know if RJ Barrett can do this level of quality again. Not sure he can do that, but anywhere close would be outstanding for the Raptors to utilize. And what was excellent even so far this summer is that he still brought this incredible level of play to the Olympics for Team Canada. So positive signs are there because he still looked like this version of RJ Barrett with Team Canada. And if he's still looking like this, In preseason with the Raptors, it's going to be even more exciting for the team going into the season. You know, I've spoken about many times for the Raptors season. I don't think it's going to be the most fantastic season as far as the win-loss are concerned. Is the team good enough to win 36, 37, 38 plus games? I think it has the capability of winning that many games. It's probably on paper a 35-ish win team. 
But you have to remember that is 35 wins really where this team wants to be? Or is it better off going for a draft pick, getting more tickets in the raffle for Cooper Flag? We shall see. But the big thing, the name of the game for the season is internal growth, internal development. And these three things, if we can get all three of these things to come to fruition for the core group of players, my goodness, it'll be a very bright future, an even brighter future than it already is for Toronto and the fans of its basketball team, the Toronto Raptors. So what do you make of the points that I have in this video? Do you have any different ones that I may have missed? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below, because that's it for me for today. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more Raptors content just like this in videos and in live streams. And I will see you again next time.